Uh, we've been seeing Ayodela this, uh, you know, relatively flat performance coming to the fore uh, from Nigeria over the past week. What are your expectations for uh, the week ahead? Yeah, well, um, investors are still playing very cautiously in the equities market. Um, we know that the banks will keep driving this market. Um, just last week, the CBN um, reassured shareholders of the bailed-out banks that um, the recapitalization ex exercise intended by CBN, you know, purely lies in their hands. So that that may be a sort of um, confidence boost for the equities market, you know, on the, on the short term. But we know that, um, of course, the shareholders may not, you know, have the capital mm -hmm. adequacy to, to, you know, recapitalize this bank. So, but we're, we're, we're still waiting for the president to sign the AMCO law, you know, um, effectively. That would be a major boost for the um, banking industry and, of course, for the equities market. But for now, investors are playing very, very cautiously, yeah. even despite the fact that most banking stocks are trading below their net asset value. So we're waiting for the AMCO law, and that, you know, that would be the major boost for this market. Well, that caution certainly warranted, uh, but those uh, banks that have been, uh, you know, uh, been proving to be strong have been catching some attention at the moment. They've been able to grow credit by 53% uh, over the past five months. Those uh, bailed out by the Central Bank of Nigeria. To what extent is that working to boost some confidence in the sector? Because it is a significant uh, development showing that the Nigerian banking system uh, is, uh, you know, well, the reforms that we're seeing in the Nigerian banking system is working well and consolidating to some extent. Well, well, we need to actually define the growth of this credit. Are they credit to the federal government or credit to private sector? We have not really seen major growth of credit to the real sector of the economy. And that's a major concern. Credit is a driver of growth. If we don't see this credit going to the real sector, if we don't see you know, the electric power coming up, then we are not really going to see um, the, you know, the major growth you know, affecting the entire populace in the country. So um, we, we want to see... Um, even from the banks and balance sheet and, and the profit account, we want to see interest income coming from the banks. You know, that, that would show us that they are actually giving out these loans and um, even to the um, sector that really requires this loan. You know, so um, their second quarter result would be a, a major boost also. With the first banking, um, in the, um, the, first bank, the first bank that has released a second quarter result is actually UBA. And from what we saw from UBA, mm -hmm. we were not too impressed. We saw profits and even gross earnings declining. So that, that, that may you know, throw more insight into what's going to happen in other banks. So the second quarter result, would um, investors are going to wait for that before they can take a major decision on some of these banks. But for the rescue banks, um, they still constitute high-risk investments. And of course, um, the, the growth in loans, um, we would not see that because the credit yeah. risk is also high in the economy. Well, Ayodele, banks aside, I mean, we've had uh, lots of results streaming in from the food and beverages segment. And as I mentioned earlier, Unilever dropped almost 2% on Friday after the company reported its second quarter earnings short of its own projections. And there was quite a big uh, discrepancy there. Uh, why have uh, forecasts been so offside? And uh, how are you looking at Unilever at the moment? Yeah, um just like um, Nigerian breweries um, and even some other manufacturing companies, we have consistently seen drop in um, um, sales. We've consistently seen drop in profit by the manufacturing companies. Of course, we know that the cost of production is high. Um, and then, of course, um, access to credit is what we always hammer on. And then we've not seen that coming to these manufacturers. And so they've reported drop in sales. Unilever also reported drop in um, profit. Even the net asset, the shareholders' funds, have also dropped. So it means something is very wrong with um, this, this um, real sector. It means they are facing huge challenges. Yeah. They are, most of their um, um, overheads is going into um, um, fueling of the generator. So they are having a bit of challenge. It, we, we also gather that um, inflation rate has dropped in the economy. You know, but we, we are not really seeing this um, effect on the, 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 the companies in Nigeria. Yeah. So um, the manufacturers are going through a tough time. Well, um, sick for flour mills, flour mills have done 
remarkably well. I wouldn't know how they were able to do that, but I guess <laughs> the cost of wheat, the, the price of wheat has really dropped. And that's why probably Farm yeah. Flamies was able to record tremendous growth in their, in their sales and even their profit. And of course, the benefit declaration to shareholders was even um, mouth watching. So apart from Flamies, the recent results that we have seen in the last one week have not been encouraging at all. Well, certainly uh, flour molds has been proven to be uh, proving to be a very interesting story, but a lot of it dependent on that international price of wheat, and so many saying that it could be a volatile period ahead.